So often we become complacent and we become stuck in just the Ramadan time capsule. Which I said is not necessarily a bad thing. We need to talk about Ramadan and fasting. But sometimes the talks become a bit redundant. This is not the case. Ramadan, 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 and that's it. At best, you get a talk or two talking about after Ramadan, before Ramadan. But the special focus, the lens being tuned in on the rest of your life, on the rest of the years, the, the days, the travel, the year, and time is often neglected. This is not the case. So, after the month of Ramadan, we have another very special month and more special time. Before the month of Ramadan, there is a very special month. A month in which the Rasul وسلم, used to fast most of it, if not all of it. And that's the month of Shabbat. When was the last time we heard a lecture on Shabbat? Have you ever on fasting in Shabbat? When is it permissible? When is it impermissible? The days? How did the Prophet spin Shabbat? When was the last time we heard a lecture on this? At best, as I said, you heard a lecture on preparing for Ramadan getting ready, getting some of your sins, doing away with your bad habits, preparing your sleep, things like this. At best, you hear a lecture or two here and there on Shawwal, fasting Shawwal, and most of the time it's a question about Shawwal. A woman, she asked the question, I had my period in the month of Ramadan, I didn't fast all 29 or 30 days, can I make the six days of Shawwal before I make up the other days? It's not the case. I was traveling, the brother says, I was sick, I had to go somewhere, I didn't make all of Ramadan, can I do show up? At best, at best here it is. But very seldom do we sit down and do we take Shaban and Shoel and the rest of the Islamic months and study what is from the authentic Sunnah with regards to special acts of worship. Times in which are virtuous, not as virtuous as Ramadan, or even sometimes which is more virtuous than Allah. Or sometimes in which the ulama, the people of knowledge of the past, they differ on. Such as, just an example, what's a better time? The first ten days of Al Hijjah or the last ten nights of Allah? If you if you ask that question, what would you say? Which time is more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah Allah. What do you think? Based on what you've learned, what you've studied. Yeah, like part, of, part of knowledge, we all know, is if you don't know, to say Allah and Ladri. And another part of knowledge that we often neglect is the difference between when you're giving a fatwa and between a class and you're being engaged. The Prophet says to his companions, we know sometimes when he asked them certain questions, they said, Allah knows best. Allah knows what's the best. But the other hadith, most the Prophet says them as the companions, and they say what they thought, what they knew, what was already established to them. A perfect example of this is the authentic hadith, in which the Messenger of Allah says them as the companions, now he expected them to say, he asked them, and said, do not let him this. They said, or he said to them, do you know who the bankrupt man is? What did the companions say? They said, al is Ufina, I said, man la dirham ala hu la ta'ala. You see, there's no money, no cash, gold, silver, whatever you want to call it. So this is an example of how sometimes the companions, they did what? They answered with what they already knew or thought. And there are other times which they said, Allah was who Allah. So therefore, often many of us, uh, we get a misunderstanding. At a classroom setting, you try to give what you can give. And then once you find out you don't have it, they say Allah is the best. But some brothers, they think that Allah, I don't know, I let it, I don't, I'm not even going to try to answer the question. Right? So therefore, which of the two times is more virtuous? Based on what you know, what you study, what you think, what you feel? First 10 days of the ninja, or last 10 nights of Ramadan? Hold on. I think the last 10 nights, because it's based off of uh, the night of the Greek. Night of Qadr, right? Anyone else? You might differ with them. Y'all agree with that? I would agree. You agree? You agree? Tight. You disagree? Tight. Uh, I say a lot of best with the first 10 days, the first the 10 days of Vohitra. Uh, 
based upon um, what you to com- what Allah allows you to complete during the month of Ramadan. Khair, inshallah. I believe this is an example of there is another month, another time, in which is a great deal of importance, but is often neglected. People talk about religion, but what about the other Islamic months? What are the names of the Islamic months? Let's count them down. Muharram. 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 What are the sacred months? Muhammad. Muhammad. Very good. Excellent. Now, we have 12 Islamic months. How many lectures, how many classes do we have on these months? And the acts of ibadah from the authentic sunnah. Not customs, not innovations, not authentic sunnah. I need to explain the Rasul sunnah on what to do. It's very unfortunate. Wherever you live, whatever level of knowledge you have, especially in America, when you're constantly being engaged by the Bhakti, day and night, you're constantly being engaged by the media, by some type of fashion, some type of distraction, some type of evil, or if it's not evil, just some type of nonsense. Wherever you go, people are being engaged because the internet has made the dunya small. Okay? However, we're talking about our society and our community. You're not talking about this. We need seven days a week to be speaking about the sunnah and what to do and how to be engaged in the amen and how to be connected and linked to a long span of time. So this is what we want to talk about with regards to this issue, and also with regards to the issue of time in the Muslim life. We spoke about this before. And also the other issue of pre and post. Pre and post is crucial to the Muslim. If you want to reap the full benefit from our life, if you want to extract every single drop and ounce of juice from the bounties of the Muslim life, you can't do it unless you have this concept firmly established in your mind. Before Ramadan, after Ramadan. And also taking advantage of the month and of itself. However, when our talks, when our khutbas, when our lessons are redundant and repetitive, the same exact thing, the lives are not, you lose vigor, you lose steam. So therefore, we have a book here that we're going to leave those concepts of time. We'll come back to that, inshallah. Right? A book here, I'm sure you've heard of the book before. The name of the book is called the Ta'if al Ma'arif Fima, the Mawasim al Ayani bin al Mubarif. It's called the Ta'if al Ma'arif. And it deals with the year. Annual acts of Ibadah. Acts of Ibadah throughout the entire year. Not just Ramadan, not just the first 10 days of religion, not just the last 10 nights of Ramadan, but what? The entire on la ta'if which you can translate or render into English to mean subtle jewels and gems of knowledge. La ta'if, something that is latif, ma'arif. So therefore, the author of this book, I'm going to mention it shortly, that it definitely was, I'm sure, Salim, other brothers may know, but those who are the author of this book, he wrote this book based off of the authentic hadith of the Prophet alayhi wa sallam or the Sahaba or the Tabi'in, their disciples, their students what they said and understood of course of the hadith pertaining to 12 Islamic months of connection to Allah 12 Islamic months with regards to tightening, strengthening and solidifying your relationship with your Lord and your Lord we all know the author of this book is Al-Hafid Ibn Rajab Al-Ahmadi Rahimahullah Ta'ala died in the year 795 of the Hijrah. He was from the students of Ibn Qayyim al Jazeel. So before we get to what we want to get into, let's just take a brief look into the index. As me and Salim were doing on the car with another book. Right? Let's look into the index. And uh, a very important tool for the Talmud and for the non-Fahad Muslim, namely Muslim, namely Muslim, Muslim, very important. Every single book that you buy, every book that's in your home, you should do the following things with that book. 
if you don't do anything else with it. Number one, you should read the introduction. Number two, you should look through the index, the table of contents. If you don't do anything else, then at least do those two things and flip through the book. You may not have time to read the whole book. You may have other things that you need to do. Now, everybody see those books over there on that wall? Yeah. Tight. Maybe we can turn the camera over here. See those books? Huh? Those books over here? See the library? Library. Also, behind this is another library. Maybe you can zoom in. Zoom line is up there, but I don't think you do too much of a struggle. Fast. Fast. Is that a okay? Now, we said what? Alhamdulillah, I need another chair too, please. Alhamdulillah. 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 Now, last time I saw the bed was Medina. It's Medina, huh? Now, we have these books. Everybody, brothers, please pay attention. It's very important. Okay? We have these books on the wall, both walls. Somebody comes into your house, or somebody comes to the masjid, and he says to the brother or sister of the librarian, You read all these books? Okay? Unfortunately, you brothers didn't get a chance to visit me in Medina. Hopefully one day you get a chance to visit me in New York or in Philadelphia. And inshallah, you get to see my library. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say, you read all of these books? Find a law. So many books. What should I say to them? Or what can I say to them? Huh? Nah. I read all of them. That's what I'll say. No.
However, there's something that is related between outside of Ramadan, before and after, and the concept of time, and what I want to speak about and read to you, brothers and sisters, today. We didn't ask my own time. We know in any way of life, any profession, whether it's culinary arts, or it's sports, a very important aspect of having a successful event, whether it's a dinner, a banquet, a game, is the what? It's the preparation before, the period. When the person goes to open up his restaurant, he doesn't just start his food as the first customer comes in to prepare his food. When we have a playoff game, the person doesn't just get off the bench cold, take off clothes, it's prepared, it's warm. This is not the case that we talk about the sweet science of boxing. One of the cardinal sins is getting the man from the dressing room to the ring and he's cold and he's not sweating. This is not the case. It's crucial. Preparation before any other example you can think about. Any other sphere or aspect of life. Before. And also we have the concept of afterwards. The, let's go back to sports. Something that has become a religion in our current days in which we live. Sports, people worship sports. From Medina to Baltimore. From the Prophet City to Baltimore. Sports is a religion. Cult following. What does the average player do? What does the good player do? And what does the great player do? The average player doesn't prepare before and he doesn't do anything after the game. Good player may do some preparation, some practice, some extra hours, and a little bit afterwards. But the great player, the champion, is the one who sits down after the game, after the fight, and he watches and he reviews and he watches the game. This is not the case. He improves on what he did. And he thinks about going to the next fight, or the next campaign, or the next dinner, or any other example that you're gonna think about. So often, we become complacent we become stuck in just the Ramadan time capsule, which I said is not necessarily a bad thing. We need to talk about Ramadan and fasting, but sometimes the talks become a bit redundant. This is not the case. Ramadan, 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 and that's it. At best, you get a talk or two talking about after Ramadan, before Ramadan. But the special focus, the lens being tuned in on the rest of your life, on the rest of the years, the, the days, the travel of the year, and time is often neglected. This is not the case. So, after the month of Ramadan, we have another very special month, and more special time. Before the month of Ramadan, there is a very special month, a month in which the Rasul Sallallahu used to fast most of it, if not all of it. And that's the month of Shabbat. When was the last time we heard a lecture on Shabbat? Have you ever on fasting in Shabbat? When is it permissible? When is it impermissible? The days? How do the apostles ever spend Shabbat? When was the last time we heard a lecture on this? At best, as I said, you heard a lecture on preparing for Ramadan, getting ready, getting some of your sins, doing away with your bad habits, preparing your sleep, things like this. At best, you hear a lecture to hear near on Shabbat, fasting Shabbat, and most of the time, it's a question about Shawal. A woman, she asked the question, I had my period in the month of Ramadan, I didn't fast all 29 or 30 days, can I make the six days of Shawal before I make up the other days? It's not the case. I was traveling, the brother says, I was sick, I had to go somewhere, I didn't make all of Ramadan, can I do Shawal? At best, at best we hear this. But very seldom do we sit down and do we take Shaban, and Shoel and the rest of the Islamic months and study what is from the authentic Sunnah with regards to special acts of worship. Times in which are virtuous, not as virtuous as Ramadan, or even sometimes which is more virtuous than Ramadan, or sometimes in which the Ramadan the people of knowledge of the past they differ on, such as, just an example, What's a better time? The first 10 days of the ninja or the last 10 nights of Ramadan? If you, if you ask that question, what would you say? Which time is more pleasing to us by the time? Allah Allah Allah, 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 All
What do you think based on what you've learned, what you've studied? Part of, part of knowledge, we all know, is if you don't know, to say Allah and la And another part of knowledge that we often neglect is the difference between you giving a fatwa and between a class and you're being engaged. The Prophet says some companions, we know sometimes when he asked them certain questions, they said, Allah knows best, Allah knows who knows best. But of other hadith, which the Prophet says them asked the companions, and they said what they thought, what they knew, what was already established to them. A perfect example of this is the authentic hadith, in which the Messenger of Allah says them asked the companions, the hadith got them he asked them, they said, or oh, he said to them, do you know who the bankrupt man is? What did the companions say? They said, They said, was no money, no cash, gold, silver, whatever you want to call it. So this is an example of how sometimes the companions, they did what? They answered with what they already knew or thought. And there are other times which they said, Laws So therefore, often many of us, uh, we get a misunderstanding. In a classroom setting, you try to give what you can give. And then once you find out you don't have it, they say Allah is best. But some brothers, they think that Allah, I don't know, I let it, I mean, I'm not even gonna try to answer the question. Right? So therefore, which of the two times is more virtuous? Based on what you know, what you study, what you think, what you feel. First 10 days of the ninja, or last tonight's of Ramadan? Oh. I think the last tonight's because it's based off of uh, the night of the Greek. Night of Qadr, fight. Jay, anyone else? You might differ with them. Y'all agree with that? I would agree. You agree? You agree? Fight. You disagree? Fight. Uh, I'd say a lot of us with the first 10, day, the first, the ten days of Vohid. Now, based upon um, what you would what Allah allows you to complete during the month of Ramadan. Khair, inshallah. I don't know if this is an example of there is another month, another time, which is a great deal of importance, but is often neglected. People talk about religion, but what about the other Islamic months? What are the names of the Islamic months? Let's count them down. Muharram. 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 What are the sacred moths? Muhammad. Muhammad. Very good. Excellent. Now, we have 12 Islamic moths. How many lectures, how many classes do we have on these mosques? And the acts of ibadah from the authentic sunnah, not customs, not innovations, not authentic sunnah. I need to explain it. The Rasul sunnah on what to do. It's very unfortunate. Wherever you live, whatever level of knowledge you have, especially in America, when you're constantly being engaged by the Baltic, day and night, you're constantly being engaged by media, by some type of fashion, some type of distraction, some type of evil, or if it's not even just some type of nonsense. Wherever you go, people are being engaged because the internet has made the dunya small. Okay? However, we're talking about our society and our community. You're not talking about this. We need seven days a week to be speaking about the sunnah and what to do and how to be engaged in the amen and how to be connected and linked to a long span of time. So this is what we want to talk about with regards to this issue, and also with regards to the issue of time and the Muslim's life. And we spoke about this before. And also the other issue of pre and post. Pre and post is crucial to the Muslim. If you want to reap the full benefit from Ramadan, if you want to extract every single drop and ounce of juice from the bounties of Ramadan, you can't do it unless you have this concept firmly established in your mind. Before Ramadan, after Ramadan. And also taking advantage of the month and of itself. However, when our talks, when our hookbooks, when our lessons are redundant and repetitive, the same exact thing. 
their lives are now you lose the vigor, you lose the scene. So therefore, we have a book here that we're going to leave those concepts of time. We'll come back to that, inshallah. Right? A book here, I'm sure you've heard of the book before. The name of the book is called The Ta'if al Ma'arif Fima. The Mawasim al Ayani bin al Mubarif. It's called The Ta'if al Ma'arif. And it deals with the year. Annual acts of Ibadah. Acts of Ibadah throughout the entire year. Not just Ramadan. Not just the first 10 days of the ninja. Not just the last 10 nights of Ramadan. But what? The entire Aan. La Ta'if al Ma'arif. Which you can translate or render into English to mean subtle jewels and gems of knowledge. La Ta'if. Something that is Latif. Ma'arif. So therefore, the author of this book, I want to mention it shortly, that it medically was, I'm sure I'm saying, other brothers may know, but those who are, the author of this book, he wrote this book based off of the authentic hadith of the Prophet, alayhi salam, what the Sahaba, what the Tabi'in, their disciples, their students, what they said and understood, of course, the hadith pertaining to 12 Islamic months of connection to Allah. 12 Islamic months with regards to tightening, strengthening, and solidifying your relationship with your Lord and your Lord. We all know the author of this book is Al-Hafid Ibn Rajab Al-Ahmadi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who died in the year 795 of the Hijrah. He was from the students of Ibn Qayyim Al-Juzi, Rahimahullah. So before we get to what we want to get into, let's just take a brief look into the index. As me and Salim were going on the car with another book. Right? Let's go into the index. And uh, a very important tool for the Talmud and for the non five Muslim, Naaman Muslim, Naaman Muslim, very important. Every single book that you buy, every book that's in your home, you should do the following things with that book if you don't do anything else with it. Number one, you should read the introduction. Number two, you should look through the index, the table of contents. If you don't do anything else, then at least do those two things and flip through the book. You may not have time to read the whole book. You may have other things that you need to do. Now, everybody see those books over there on that wall? Yeah. Tell you, maybe we can turn the camera over here. See those books? Huh? Those books over there? See the library? Library. Also, behind this is another library. Zoom line is up there, but I don't think you do too much for struggle. Fast. Fine. Is that what I'm Now, we said what? Alhamdulillah. I need another chair too, please. Alhamdulillah. Hey, Oha. Inshallah. Fine. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Fine. Now, last time I saw the bed was Medina. It's Medina, huh? The one is? No. Now, we have these books. Everybody, brothers, please pay attention. It's very important. Okay? We have these books on the wall, both walls. Somebody comes into your house, or somebody comes into the masjid, and he says to the brother or sister of the librarian, You read all these books? Okay? Unfortunately, you brothers didn't get a chance to visit me in Medina. Hopefully one day you get a chance to visit me in New York or in Philadelphia and inshallah you get to see my library. Yeah. Some people say, you read all these books? Why not law? So many books. What should I say to them? Or what can I say to them? Nah. I read all of them? That's what I'll say? No. Why not? I would say I'm constantly going over them. You're constantly going over them. Why can't I say I read all of them? Well, I don't have no knowledge why you would say that, but for me... I don't have one of my professors in Islamic University of Medina. He said this to us. He said, if somebody came to my house and he asked me if I read all of the books, my library, I would say, nah. 
He says in every single book that I've bought, I read the introduction and I read the index. And I look through it and that is considered to have he should know what's in the book. Because why well, brothers and sisters, every single book is not meant and is not made to be read from cover to cover. Every single book is not made to be memorized. Every single book is not made to be referenced and used for reference. There are different types of books. There are some books that are made to be memorized. There's some books that are only made to be what used for research. And there are other books that are made to be read out of yeah, the casualty, illusionary, etc. So therefore, this book, just for you to get an idea of what I'm talking to you about, firstly. Secondly, the importance of this topic and getting rid of the stale understanding of just Ramadan Hajj, just Jumu'ah Muslim. Let's look through the index of this book. The author he then says, he says, Majlisun fi fadl tarkiri bin Allah Ta'ala wa majalis al the book is divided into chapters that he calls majalis, sittings. He calls every chapter what? It mentions. The first mentions is Fadl Tadkir, is the excellence and the superiority of reminding each other about Allah and making a sitting in a circle for no purpose except for giving an exhortation, admonishment. Not necessarily a lesson, not necessarily technical issues, rulings. Not necessarily backbiting, talking about people, disrespecting people. Allah knows best what those people do at night. You may be praying at all night. You don't know who's close to Allah. You may say, Salim is this and he's that. Only Allah knows the status that he has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to be careful. We need to be very careful with what we do in our cities. These cities here, he says, the excellence of making cities just for wa'af. Just to admonish each other. No other purpose. That's the main chapter. It then says, Majalis was vikri, tuji li ashabiya rikatan hulub, wa zuhda fi dunya, wa raghbata fi akhira. The first subchapter is, the sittings of dhikr bring about softness of the heart. And they push the people away from indulging in the worldly life, and they encourage them and incite them to rush and challenge each other for their life. Strive for the afterlife. Second subchapter. Had an dikri ba'dan kibah in the Jesus dikri. He says, How are these people when they leave these cities of dikri? When the people get up and they go back to their homes or their their jobs, whatever they're doing, what is the state of their hearts? What is the state of their souls, their minds, and their physical bodies? Does it change them? And we know if the author says this. And it also has to be an opposite averse effect. When you sit in majalis and ghiba, sitting in which you talk back by people, you speak to other people, and you gossip, and you spread command, and you speak about that which you have no knowledge of, it's going to have an effect on you. It's going to have a darkness on your heart and also on your face. Or as we say, it's going to be gray. There's no doubt about this. You ever wonder why you see a brother for a very long time? You see him, he looks at you funny, he doesn't shake your hand, he doesn't give you a hug the same way. I go ahead and say, we're making this up. It lies in the dark. He started off, uh, I'm not going to talk about the daddy, the apple daddy's a good brother. But then he sits with someone who talks about him. And he didn't make any card. He didn't say, fear Allah, don't say that about the brother, Kella, Kella. And he sits, and he sits, six months, a year, time goes by, and he's affected by that filth, by that disease. And it has an effect upon him. And the opposite is the what? The opposite. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, in the authentic hadith that's collected in the Sahih, narrated of Muhammad Ibn Abdul Anhu, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said that in the Lillahi Malaikatan, he says Allah has angels that travel about, sayyara, they move about, and they search for nothing other than what? Circles of dhikr. And we all know what happens in this marvelous hadith. At the end of the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, he says what they asked me for, what they seeking refuge from before, so on and so forth. He says, I bear I, I bear you to witness, I bring you to witness, I've forgiven them. What do the angels say? They say, Oh Allah, what they say? There's one there that didn't. He has nothing to do with our soul, we just came. I need to borrow some money, out here. He said, come to the master, meet me in the master in the class. I don't care about the class. I didn't come to me to get a law, I just come to get money from you. But because of the beauty of the circle, 
and so splendid, so blessed by just by just me being there with you, I'm forgiven of my sins. And the Prophet Sallallahu he tells us, saying, What? Hadith says, they are the people and their friends are never wretched. So this is the effect that you get from khayr and from sittings and circles of khayr. The next subchapter he says, He says, these circles and sittings of exhortation, he says, they're whips with which you discipline your heart. It's like you're beating your heart to be upright and to be steadfast. Next subchapter. فَالْدَتَانِ عَظِيمَتَانِ فِي إِقَاءِ الْخَرْقِ الْغُرُوبِ أَحْيَانِ He gives two major reasons why many people falling into sin. Wisdom's behind that. Wisdom's behind people being sinful occasionally. Now, pay close attention, brothers and sisters, to the index. We didn't say anything about time here. We didn't say anything about Rajab or Sama or Muharram. In other words, he's leading you up to taking advantage of the time. Clear. He didn't say this. Al Kalamu ala Qawihi Ta'ala, Wala bi Khalaqa Sanawati wa Arda bi Sitti di Ayaman, wa Kana Aushu ala Allah. Al Kalamu ala Anna Ma Amada tu Jimi in Makhlukat. He mentioned some other things that we'll, we'll uh, move on to summarize and keep the time. He says, Listen to the word that he mentions. He says, Wadaif. Wadaif means a what? A job. A hustle. Work. Things that you are to do in the month of Allah, which is Al Maram. In other words, you're a teacher, you're a school teacher. You have off in the summertime. I want to make some extra money. I want to stay busy. I don't want to be bored, so I get a summer job. I get a summer hustle. I have a job in the summer. I have a job in the fall, a job in the spring. I'm always working and saving and stacking some type of money. And this is the concept of the believer, and not just in the Ramadan. Not just when you come to make your together. Not just the six days of your work. Every single day out of the year, yeah, every day out of the year, there's something special for you to do, but even in that, that gets you closer to lost power time. And this is crucial to benefit from Ramadan. You cannot truly benefit from Ramadan unless you have pre-game and post-game. Everybody understand this? There's a difference between a believer and a Muslim. There's different levels between an average mediocre fighter and someone who's a champion undisputed and then what else? He holds all of the belts. Because he practices, he trains, and what does he do after the fight? He studies and he watches. And he improves on his techniques. And he looks at his opponent's techniques and he watches all of the footage. Everybody understand this concept they're trying to get to? It's very important for the Muslims to understand. And the only reason why we're making these examples, these word examples, is to make it simple and tangible. And then we know as people knowledge have explained, it is permissible to get examples. It's permissible to make tangible examples. Everybody understand this? Khair, inshallah. Why was Mike Tyson such a great heavyweight boxer? Because of his power, because of his speed, because of his impregnable defense, because of this, because of that, his trainers. That was only a part of his legacy. One of the crucial reasons why he was such a great boxer because he was a true student of the art. He studied hours and hours and hours and hours of film and footage. He watched the old boxers, his contemporaries. He watched everything. He was a student of the art, and that's what made him so great. He didn't just train before the fight. He didn't just study after the fight. But he would. He woke up early in the morning. They asked him, says, why do you run at 4 a.m.? Why don't you do your role later on? He says, I feel it gives me an edge over the next guy, because he's not doing it. This is the Muslim's mentality when it comes to the Ibadah. You have to prepare for Ramadan, and you have to recap Ramadan. What did you do? What didn't you do? And why? What are you going to do next year? But don't, you don't get stuck in that one point. You don't get stuck in that one fight. You move on to the next fight now. Now, show up. There are things to do in the month of Shawah. And after Shawah, there are also things to perform, acts of worship from the what? Authentic Sunni. Everybody got this point? Trying to get to it? Clear, inshallah. I want you to leave, say the brother gave a lesson on oxen, Mike Tyson. Clear. <laughs> Clear? Makes sense. 
Ibn Rajab rahimahullah then says al Majlis al Awwal fi Fadl Shahr Lain Muharram wa Ashrihi al Awwal wa fihi Faslan. Al Fasl al Awwal fi Fadl Tatawwur al Siyam. Al Fasl al Thani fi Fadl Qiyam al Layl. He says the first sitting in the month of Muharram, the first month of the Islamic calendar, is the superiority of this month, and especially the first 10 days of this month. He then branches off by saying the excellence of performing violent acts of fasting and also the excellence and superiority of prayer at night. Al Majlis al Thani fi Yom Ashura wa Sawmihi min Fadail Yom Ashura. Al Majlis al Thani fi Bulum al Hajj. Ala Mat al Hajj al Mabrur. Talak al Hajj Masnoon. He then talks about in the next sub chapter the day of Ashura and fasting the day of Ashura. Do we notice as Muslims that there is a recommended day of fasting in the month of Muharram? How many of you fast this day? It's not obligatory. It's not something that's mandatory, but it's something that's going to aid you and keep you sharp for Ramadan, and you're going to learn and benefit from Ramadan, before and after, pre and post. He then says, the Qadum, a pilgrim going to make Hajj. In other words, brothers and sisters, just because you're not a pilgrim, just because you're not going to make Hajj, it does not mean that you cannot benefit from the season. It doesn't mean that you can't benefit from the Hajj season. And thinking about the Hajj and thinking about the pilgrims. He then says, signs of a blessed accepted Hajj. And this is crucial for us to know Ramadan. How do you know, Yaqi, that your Ramadan was valid, inshallah, and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are signs. Only Allah knows. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes he gives us what? Signs. And we're not going to mention it right now. Perhaps we'll mention it later on. If you see these things happening in the month of Shawwal afterwards, be it in that, you should have glad tidings that your month was accepted. And if you see other opposite things, know for sure it's a big possibility that you didn't benefit from your month. And in most cases, your people who are thirsty and hungry, and you lost their balance. Unfortunately. Ibn Rajabi then says, speaking about uh, meeting the people who come back from Hajj, he then says, وَضَائِفُ شَهْرِ سَفَرَ He talks about the acts of worship in the month of Safar, the Islamic month of Safar. The first subchapter says, الْفَلَامُ عَلَى حَدِيثِ لَا عَدْوَى وَلَا هَمَتَى وَلَا سَفَرَ He talks about a hadith that states that there is no Safar. In other words, the pagan Arabs, they used to have superstitious beliefs and baseless folklore with regards to this month. They believed certain things would happen of good and bad in this month. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he wanted to abate and annul these polytheistic belief systems. And this is also important for Ramadan. We have things that have crept into the month of Ramadan that are not from Ramadan. Things of culture. And there's nothing wrong with having culture in Islam, as we said. We come from Africa. I come from Gambia, I come from Ghana, he comes from Pakistan, Bangladesh, this Muslim is from Palestine, this Muslim is from this, that is, dress how you want to dress, eat how you want to eat. That is, as long as it does not go against the Sunnah. There is no specific Islamic dress code for which you can and cannot wear unless it's beneath your ankles, unless it's pure silk, unless it's so on and so forth. Let's go on. Similarly for women. What can you can and can I eat? I like rice, you like couscous. In my country, we don't eat these things. We have potatoes, we have bread, like this. You can have your culture, as long as your culture does not clash with the sunnah. And as long as your culture does not get precedence before the sunnah. So therefore, the pagan Arabs, they had beliefs about this month. And the messenger of Allah said he wanted to destroy those beliefs, they were false. So there are things that we do in Ramadan that are not from the sunnah. Things that come from pure culture. <clears throat> And their culture becomes a bad. That's a problem. Your culture is not a bad. In West Africa, this is what we do. That's fine. But the problem comes in, and when you take your cultural practices and you make it the Sunnah and Islam. And when the authentic hadith is brought to you, that's clear and simple, we say, no, we don't accept that. We're not taking that in this message. Get away, get out of here. Because of my culture. I've never heard that. I've been Muslim for 40 years. I've never heard this hadith, brother. That's the problem. And this type of haughtiness and conceit is a trait of the people of Shirk. 
When Muhammad said, La Allah, they said, No, we've never heard this before. This is a Rajah, a Jesus, weird, strange. Only one God, only one deity, no partners, no intermediaries. Quraysh won't be in charge of the Kaaba, La. And they rejected him. So the Muslim is the person who always learns and is willing to accept. Khair, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The author even says, Al Kalam wa Tawakul. He speaks about putting your trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then says, An Nahyu an Tila, the prohibition of superstitious practices. The prohibition of practicing superstition. He then says, Wa Da'ifu Shari Rabi in Awali. He talks about things to do in the month of Rabi'u Awali. In the month of Rabi'u Awali. The first subchapter, Fi Dikri Mawidi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He speaks about the Prophet sallallahu birth when he was born, the day in which mankind, jinn, the birds, the bees, the trees, everybody received some type of nur, salvation, the birth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He speaks about the fact that the Prophet was a prophet. He was destined and decreed to be a prophet before he was even brought to existence. Mentioned the Christian evidence stated this. He talks about two benefits behind the Prophet being illiterate and coming from the Arab people. Why did Allah make him illiterate? The best of creation, the last of prophets and messengers who could read, could write. Someone who was supposed to be the best of all living beings, those who were made of the human beings, and he was from these Arab people. People that were behind, that were left behind of their contemporary nations. The Arabs weren't known for much. They didn't have much. They were very simple, small people, basic people, considering the other nations and other parts of the world. Whether it was Europe, whether it was Africa, whether it was the Far East. These nations had thriving cities, had universities, had all types of technology, science, medicine, astronomy, even astrology. And the Arabs were simple, basic, better than people. But there was wisdom why Allah sent him from those people. He then says, Fadlu Rasul in Ummah, the excellence and the supreme merit that the Messenger has over this nation. He then speaks about how Isa will come to the end of time. <laughs> And his rule, the legislature that he will use to rule and judge with, is Muhammad's deen. He then says, I've met this the second city, the Dikri Mawlid A. Ghani, wa Tawqiti Dak, al Majlis al Thalif, the Dikri Mufat al Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He then speaks about other aspects of the Prophet's birth and his birthday. And when the Prophet died and passed on, I next to that. Next chapter, he says, Things to do in the month of Rajab. Who's heard the lecture on this before? On what to do in the month of Rajab? How many lectures have we heard redundant, repetitive on the same topic? Over and over and over and over again. Islam, any Sunnah is very broad. So many things, there's not enough time to talk about. He says things to do in the month of Rajab. First and foremost, Hukman Qitali fil Ashman al Hurru. What is the ruling on fighting and waging war in the sacred mosques? Is it permissible? Is it his right? Can you defend yourself? Etc. He then talks about the names and the titles that this month has. Raja, according to the author, has several other names and titles. He then says, Salat al He talks about the Ravah prayers. A special prayer made in a special way. Is this from the Sunnah? Is this innovation? He talks about it in detail. He says, Rajab, what is the ruling on fasting in the month of Rajab? Hukmu Sakati fi Rajab. What is the ruling on paying your zakat in this month? Hukmu Ni'tinari fi Rajab. What is the ruling on performing an umrah in the month of Rajab? He then says, Wazaifu Shani Shaban. Things to do in the month of Shaban. First and foremost, al Majlis al Awwal, Fasting the month of Shaban, as we explained in Jahid. 
from the sunnah and what the Prophet ﷺ used to do, he used to fast an abundant amount of days of the month of Shaban. Is it permissible for a person to fast after the 15th day of Shaban, or is it haram? The hadith says, إِلَنْ تَصَفَ شَعْبَانٍ فَلَا تَصُومُ When Shaban reaches its middle peak, or its middle part, don't fast. Is that how it's only? Did the Prophet say those words? He then says, الْمَجْسُ الثَّانِي فِي ذِكْرِ نِسْفِ شَعْبَانٍ He speaks about the middle of Shaban. It's a very widespread concept. الْمَجْسُ الثَّانِي فِي سِيَانِ أَخْرِ شَعْبَانٍ What is the ruling on fasting the last part of Shaban? In other words, a week, a day or two before the month of Ramadan. Is it permissible to fast? Or do you have to stop fasting until Ramadan comes in? He then says, وَظَائِفْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانَ الْمَعَظَمْ Things to do in the great month of Ramadan. He says, الْمَجْرِسُ الْأَوَّلِ فِي فَوْرِ السِّيَانِ The first sitting is the superiority and the excellence of fasting. الْمَجْرِسُ الثَّانِ فِي فَوْرِ الْجُودِ فِي رَمَضَانِ وَتِلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ He talks about the excellence of being generous in the month of Ramadan and reciting the laws of the Quran and the Al Majlis al Thalif, fi dhikri al Ashir al Awsat bi Shahr al Ramadan, wa dhikri nisbi Shahr al Akhir. He talks about the splitting up of the month of Ramadan. First ten, second ten, towards the last ten. He then says, he talks about the Adhans. He talks about fi dhikri al Sabr al Awakhir, the last. Seven nights of Ramadan. Not just ten nights, but now we have the last what? Seven nights. And then he says, al Majlisu Sadis, the Widai Ramadan, the sixth sitting is saying bye bye to Ramadan. Farewell. When the sad time comes. And that's when most of us stop. That's when most of the lecturers and classes stop. But that's not it. And that's the whole point of why we're mentioning this. Is that now Allah gives you another month. If you fell short in Ramadan, you made sins in Ramadan, you didn't do everything you want to do, tell it. Keep moving. As it states in the famous Japanese proverb, if you fall seven times, get up eight times. Keep moving. Dust yourself off, wipe off your scrapes, and stay positive and look forward. This is a very important concept for the Muslim to understand. Because life is imperfect. You're the son of Adam. You're, you, you have sin, mistake, forgiveness. It's the nature of your being. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you another chance. He gives you another opportunity. And this is why we need to talk about these things, that there are 300, at least 360 days of Shawla in the Islamic calendar. 360 days at least, or less, in the Islamic calendar. At least 300 days, right? Fair enough. You have at least 300 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a second opportunity. And what we'll I like, brothers and sisters, when you study this, and you read these things, it should show you the great mercy of Allah. That He didn't take your soul after you made that mistake. He gave you another day to repent. He gave you another day to do better. He gave you another day to stack more good deeds. The author then says, Allah, if Shani Shawwal, he talks about things to do in the month of Shawwal. Al Majlis al Awwal, fi Siyam Shawwal, kulli wa tiba'i Ramadan, fi Siyam Siti, Riyam al Shawwal. The first city he talks about fasting the entire month of Shawwal. Is it from the Sunnah? Is it permissible? Is it, if so, what's the good deed that you'll receive of fasting the entire month of Shawwal? Or at least six days after the month of Ramadan. He then says, Al Majlisustani, fi dhikr al Hajj, wa fawdihi, wa al Hafi alayhi. He talks about the superiority of Hajj, the encouragement to perform Hajj. He then says, Al Majlisu Thalif, Fima Yukum, Muqam al Hajj, Wal Umrah, and then Ajzid, and Awa Al Huma. He says, This is very important for us here in America. What do you do? What substitute can you have when you can't perform Hajj and Umrah? You can't physically go make Hajj, you can't physically perform Umrah, you don't have enough money, you can't get off work. Is there a substitute? Is there something that Allah has given you? in which you get a similar reward. This is crucial for the Muslims to understand. He then says, وَظِيفَتْ شَعْرِ ذِنْ قِيَرَةً وَظِيفَتْ شَعْرِ ذِنْ حِنْجَةً 
He mentions one basic chapter on the month of al qaeda then he mentions the Holy Hijrah. He says, Al-Majlis al-Awwal fi fadli ashd li hijjati wa fi fasnan. Al-Fasl al-Awwal fi fadli al-Amri fi. Al-Fasl al-Thani fi fadli ashd li hijjati ala ghayri min a'ashad al-Shuhur. Al-Majlis al-Thani fi fadli yawm arafata ma'aid al-Nahm. Fada'i yawm arafata al-Ta'adida. He says the first city is pretending to the superiority of this month. First and foremost, working good deeds, therein. Number two, how these 10 days, the first 10 days of the Hijja are better than 10 days in any other month. And as we said before, the people of knowledge, they differ on which is better, what's more virtuous. First 10 of the Hijja or last 10 of the Quran. The author then says, the excellence of the day of Arafah, along with Eid and Nahal, the Eid of Adha, the Eid of Svarim, he then talks about the days of Tashriq. What is meant by Ayyam and Tashriq? And what are the days of Tashriq? Mujahid. We say the days of Tashriq. How many days are there in Adha? How many days? One. Just one day. What's your name, Akhi? Sajjad. Sajjad. How many days? Falaha. Uh, Falaha. Just three. Oh. How many days are in Adha? Just three days. That's it. Salim, Salamak Allah. How many days are in Allah? Uh, Arba. Arba. He says four days. What are those four days? Uh, the first day. The actual day of Nah, the day of Swarim. Then we have? Day after, three days after. Three days after, which are called? Yamit Tashrik. Why are these days called Ayyam and Tashriq? This is a subtle benefit. What's your name, Akhi? Jihad. Jihad. Why are they called Ayyam and Tashriq? Subject. They say that they call these days title. We have to understand something before we move on about the Arabic language, even the English language, but specifically the Arabic language. I would say everything, or at least many things, most things, there are reasons why they name things. They're cliches. All right, as we said, the Arabs were, and even to this day, in many aspects of their life, their lifestyle, simple people, okay? They like to memorize things simply and easily. They give cliches to words and times and places to memorize them, okay? When we say, Yom Tawiyah, the day in which you go to Mina, when you perform in Hajj, why don't they give it a date? Why do they call it Tawiyah? There's a reason why, a traditional reason why. Ayyam Tashdeeq, the days of Tashdeeq. In other words, after they slaughtered the animal Muslim, they slaughtered the cows, the camels, the goats, they would then make what? Jerky. They would cut up the meat, slice it in tiny pieces, and they would salt it and dry it to preserve the meat. Yushadriqun Allah. Shadraqa, Yushadriqun Tashdeeqan is to take something and chop it up into small pieces and dry it out. So after they had slaughtered those animals, they would eat some of it, cook some of it, prepare for some of it, give it to their guests, give it to the pilgrims, feed their servants, whatever these may be, and they will also preserve some of the meat. So those three days after is recorded the days of what? Tashdeeq, the days of the journey. Ta'ib, khayr inshallah, little translation. Ta'ib inshallah, moving on. So we have four days, Salim, huh? Four. According to Salim, Eid has how many days? Four. Ta'ala, Hassan. The author then says, Fi dhikri khitan ha'am. The last city in that month is the end of the year. And this goes to show us that the concept of the beginning of the year, the end of the year, quote unquote New Year's, is not something that's 100% exclusive to the Kufar. It's not something that's absolutely specific to the Mushrikeen. But even the Muslims of the past, they understood and they realized the importance of year, year beginning and year ending. So, you gotta keep that saying, wow, instead of New Year's, watch the ball drop, blah, blah, blah. We're trying to prove a point here. A New Year's resolution. Ah, you can't say it's haram, it's bil halal. Yeah, it's the end of the year, what have I done? Self evaluation. Everybody understand this? Khayr, so move on. He then says, Wadaifu Fusul is Sana Ashamsiya. 
He then talks about the what? The Somos, the Sun Mos. He's on the Islamic calendar is based off the what? The lunar Mos. And it's also a very interesting concept. How even back in those days they understood the difference between the two. The difference between two. And yeah, from the greatest astronomers that lived were the Muslims. Were the Muslims. He then says the last chapter, Majlis on the Likri Tawbah, what hath the Aliyah Kabla Mot, what hath the Umri Biha, what Tawbati, what Leafa to the Rahman, what he hath the Majestic Temple of Allah, what Leafa to the Rahman. He says the last sitting is talking about Tawbah, repentance to Allah, and encouraging people to make repentance before they die, and how a person should always end his life with repentance. And he says, Sajjad, he says, Toba, he says, Wadif unto the Allah. He calls it the lifelong job, the lifelong occupation. You never retire from Toba. There is no pension, there's no 401, there's no vacation from Toba. You're always 24 7 on the clock when it comes to repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That right there, Wallahi, is something you can just stop and reflect on. When's the last time I made Toba? How did I make to Was it sincere? Did I actually try, strive? Did I actually feel bad? Do I have remorse and regret for what I did? Every night that you go to sleep, do you make to As Ibn Qayyim, I advise this. Every night when you go to sleep, you say it before you sleep, offer to Whatever that word to means, whether it's making to Allah, to Allah, you talk your heart, I'm having to When you wake up, do you ask God for forgiveness? Ask God to keep you safe with no sentence? This is some food for thought. Alhamdulillah, that is a summary of the book. If anybody wants to realize what's in this book, uh, the secrets, the golden nuggets contained within this book, then inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would advise you to ask Ustaz Abu Anas Abdul Bari to give you some classes on the book, inshallah. Do not allow Abu Anas to make any excuse for not teaching you guys this book. If he doesn't have the book, I myself, you all bear witness, I will provide him with the necessary materials of the book in order for him to teach the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We will stop here. Uh, if Abu Anas would like to comment, which I would like him to do or add something, now is the time. If anybody, the Imam of the Masjid, would like to comment or add anything, any questions, now is the time. And if not, alhamdulillah. And Allah surely knows best. Thank you all for your attention, your attentiveness. Jazakum Allah for your participation. What's your name, Ali? Cash, is that for the Jihad, Jihad, guys did a good job. Is that for the Wait, wait, before, we have pros and cons. Awareness. Once again, can you reiterate the name of the author, please? Tired. What should we tell them about Is this a rule in the class? The dojo. How many recorded devices do we have on Jack right now working? Three, at least. Three video. Two audio. Two audio. I'll give you exception, Cash. This is your first time. But in most cases, whatever the class is being recorded, we never reiterate information. To encourage you to memorize it. And also, once we have it on tape, on file, that's the rule. So the book is called La Ka'i from Ma'arif. Fima. This is a PDF of the book. Folk out of the book. The Taif al-Ma'arif. Fima, the Mawasim al-Ani, Minam al-Wa'af. Ba'ib al-Rajab al-Hamadi wa'ayna wa'ata'ana. If you want to look at it, follow me. Any other comments or